Welcome to Utrecht, the Netherlands, home to the world's largest bicycle parking garage, as well as the world's busiest bike path. And today we're going to go explore the city by bike, on foot, its bridges, canals, and its bike paths. At the end of this adventure, we are going to give this city a human mobility score. Here you can see Utrecht Central Station behind me, the Netherlands' busiest train station, and what a magnificent structure it is. From this train station and one of its 21 tracks, you can catch a train to anywhere in the Netherlands. If you want to get across the train tracks, but you don't want to go through the main terminal building, you have some options. And one of these options is to come across this bridge, which has a nice bike path built into it. Unfortunately, there was not enough room to install ramps on either side of the bridge, so you do have to walk up your bike, get back on the bike, ride across this mount, and get back down again. This right here is by some measures the busiest bike path in the Netherlands and perhaps the entire world. And this is a main route towards the central train station shared with two bus lanes in the middle. When it gets really busy, you can see a whole lineup of cyclists waiting to get across this intersection. And for that matter, a whole lineup of buses as well. So here's the directions to the nearest bike parking. Stationsplein is the biggest parking garage that we'll visit. Jarbers is on the back of the station, and then we have a much smaller one. To get to the world's largest bike parking garage, you might need the world's largest bike path. And this is easily like eight meters across. With the train station behind me, this is the entrance to the world's largest bicycle parking garage. And I am going to show you how wide this path into the bike parking garage actually is. So I'm gonna do this by laying across here. And you can see I am about 1 meter 76, and that is about 5'10 for my American friends. And I am barely across one lane of this bike lane. So it is incredibly wide, I'm guessing maybe five, six meters, uh, which allows a lot of volume to get in and out during rush hour. And now that I've given you a perspective of just exactly how wide this bike path is, let's go take a tour of this bike parking facility. As we go in here, you'll notice that there are ramps all around this garage. So that means when you go access the multiple levels, there's no need to get off your bike or go up or down any stairs. You can just ride on through until you find your aisle. It'll even tell you how many spaces are free. Then proceed to put your bike in. The gray marks the pedestrian walk walkways and the red marks the bike path so as you cross the red areas just watch out and don't get run over. The OV feet or the public transport bikes are available for rental in the bottom level of this garage so if you have a Dutch public transport card you can access those bikes. Next we're gonna bike over to the Daphne Schippersbrook, a bicycle bridge built specifically for cycling and walking. Along the way we'll see some bicycle streets that's specifically designed for bicycle priority and some amazing canal lift bridges that have been designed way back when. This is just a beautiful bicycle street by the canal. Look at the buildings, look at the architecture, and look at the nature that's around here. With the bicycle street, you can fit so many people on the same width of the lane. We are like, 10 minutes outside the city by bike, and just look at how peaceful it is here. This video is brought to you by the EIT Urban Mobility Academy. And if you love learning about urbanism, check out their new courses at urbanmobilitycourses.eu. Link in the description below. Behind us is the Daphne Schippersbrug, named after a famous track and field Dutch athlete. And this bridge goes over a primary school and winds across the canal. 
they had to make that little loop detour to make sure that the grade was easily climbed if you only have a single gear on a Dutch grandma bike. And from the central station, this bridge did manage to cut cyclist commutes by about one kilometer. And of course, now the fun part is going down this bridge. You do have to hit the brakes uh, quite a bit coming down just to make sure you don't run into anyone. But it's actually a real fun ride. Look at this. It's gentle enough for coming up and down and the curves are like really quite pleasant. Behind me here is the Katrein single in the heart of Utrecht. And up until a few years ago, this was a six lane highway and it has been recently restored to its former function as a canalway through the center of the city. This is just one of the many amazing transformations that Utrecht has undergone in recent years. It's an absolute pleasure to be walking along the canals of Utrecht. It's slightly different than those found in Amsterdam because they're higher up, which allows these canals to be used for things on the lower level. They have a really cool system going on here where boats can deliver to the lower level. They have their storage rooms down here when they need to use the products and they just bring them up to the upper deck of the canal and that's where you have most of your shop fronts. But now, most of the lower level is better used for dining. And yes, emergency vehicles do get through here. People tend to move out of the way, so it's not a big problem. I hope you enjoyed that tour of Utrecht the Netherlands, and now we're going to give the city a human mobility score. For transit, we're going to have to give it a five out of five because it is the largest train station in the Netherlands. Plus, there's very good local transit access, including a tram direct to the university that was just built a couple of years ago. On the front of cycling, five out of five, just for the sheer busyness and the width of the bike paths in the city. For walking, I'm going to give it a five out of five again here because in the front of the station, there is direct access to some very nice walking paths, canal, and a very modern shopping mall. On bike share, I'm going to have to give this a three out of five. Despite a very excellent public transit bike share system, the OV Feats, it's difficult to find any other types of bike share. There's Donkey Republic here now, but there's a lack of scooter and electric mobility options. In total, that gives Utrecht the Netherlands a human mobility score of 18 out of 20, which is very impressive. So I hope you enjoyed that tour of Utrecht the Netherlands and I will see you at the next city. Get in the